A few weeks ago, we covered five Star Wars capital ships that you would and would not want to be assigned to. Because I'm creatively bankrupt, today we'll be continuing the series with a look at five Star Wars starfighters you would absolutely not want to fly in any sort of battle. As with last time, I'll try to pick starfighters which have deficiencies related to varied issues instead of just looking at, say, five different TIE fighter models. Starting off, and these are in no particular order, we have the Pinook. The Pinook represents a starfighter which has been sabotaged to the point where it is not effective whatsoever. Here's a very fun quote from the Rebel Era Campaign Guide. It is often said that the design of the Pinook is so bad that it couldn't have happened by accident. Though such statements are meant to be humorous, they are actually true. The Pinook suffered from heavy Imperial restrictions on its available armament, weapons, and power supply. Since Duran Drive Systems was not a strong supporter of the New Order, its board of directors could not convince Imperial inspectors to allow the Pinook to be sold to allies of the Empire. Thus, and I'm paraphrasing a little bit here, the Starfighter was classified as a purely civilian vessel, and the inspector saw no need to allow it any serious combat ability. The ship is slow enough to be outran by a Y-Wing, but also is very, very poorly armed. So much so that most uglies even possess more firepower. The Pinook saw some action as a training vessel, but was only used in combat by the most desperate Rebel Alliance cells or pirate groups. I think the Empire limiting the capabilities of the vast majority of fighter production is an interesting topic, which I might discuss sometime in the future. Of course, Sinar and others were allowed to make whatever they want, but the Empire also gave exemptions to other groups, including Mandalorian shipbuilders. It's very likely that the Rusan Reformation would have had similar impacts on fighter production. Regardless, you don't want to fly a starfighter that's been purposefully limited by the big bad galactic government of the day, especially of fighting against military-grade fighters. Next up, we have Uglies, and these represent going with what you got, basically throwing whatever you have into space and hoping that it can shoot down something before it explodes. Making an ugly starfighter essentially involves taking the extra parts of one ship and putting it on another. This isn't necessarily drastic, for example if you're just changing up the wings on a TIE fighter, it's probably not too bad. However, as pirate groups, mercenaries, and others get desperate, they come up with some really poor combinations. The worst of which is the TIE wing, which literally combines the worst aspects of the TIE fighter, mainly the lack of firepower and the lack of shielding, with the worst aspects of of a Y-Wing, the very slow speed. Not only are these two bad aspects put together, but both ships are now incapable of performing their specialized function. If you get in an ugly, you better hope that you've got a thousand of your buddies behind you and that you're chasing down a single starfighter. Any prolonged combat, at least in the TIE wing, will result in your death. Some less drastic examples of going with what you got include the T-Wing, which was basically a failed A-Wing successor, which was not only less effective than the A-Wing, but prone to a bunch of different types of malfunctions, or on a less drastic note, something like the Prey Bird, which the Empire had to use because they were running low on TIE Fighters. For our third category, we have what I call no winning. And there's actually two entries which occupy this position, the Cyru Swarm class and the Imperial Shadow Droid. Let's start with the Shadow Droid because I think it's the worst of the two. Basically, you have the brain of elite pilots taken out of their body and implanted into a starfighter. I say it's no winning because even if you survive, you're basically trapped as a weapon of war, an incredibly cruel fate in my opinion. Shadow droids especially were also subjected to the dark side of the force and could be affected by the whims of the reborn emperor and even outright controlled, most likely. We also have the Sai Ru, who used the process of entechment, which basically took the life energies of a living being and used it to power their weapons or computer systems. Entech souls could be put into a swarm class starfighter, which in the truce at Bakura is described as one of the least crappy options, but still, you're either going to get blown out of the sky or you're stuck being a starfighter with no free will for the rest of your existence. That's a lose-lose. Next up, we have the category Cheaping Out, and I think the best starfighter to illustrate this is one of the most famous in the galaxy, the TIE Bomber. 
literally almost every other faction in Star Wars gets bombers pretty much right. Bombers carry a lot of ordnance, thus they're not typically very fast or maneuverable. You protect against this by making bombers fairly well protected. That includes extra shielding and armor. The Empire, on the other hand, basically just made a fat TIE fighter. And TIE fighters themselves were only really survivable because they were fast. And by now, I think most of you can probably spot the issue. These things are really easy to blow up, especially with a proper starfighter, as the X-Wing novels make clear. What's more, TIE fighters aren't really well suited to guard duty just because of their sheer speed. And this is an idea that Thrawn sort of talks about, albeit about A-Wings. And bombers also have a pretty large target profile. Not only the big wings like standard TIE fighters, but also the double pods. Finally, the majority of the time, TIE fighters and interceptors were not armed with anti-capital ship weapons. That means in a major space battle, TIE bombers have to get really, really into the action. Finally, we have our fifth category in our fifth ship, one that I would call doctrinally challenged, and for this I choose the V-19 of the Galactic Republic. What do I mean by doctrinally challenged? Well, the V-19 was one of the only starfighters used by standard Republic pilots which was not heavy and which was not shielded. The V-19 was basically an early model TIE fighter, while other Galactic Republic ships were usually of high build quality. I mean, even the Z-95, for example, was shielded, as was of course the ARC-170, the Y-Wing, you get the idea. There are a few problems of this, let's look at some of the secondary ones first. One is that if I was flying this ship, I'd be a little frustrated and I definitely want to be in something more protective, like the rest of my friends in the Navy. Second, the V-19 was the only non-Jedi, non-shielded Republic Starfighter, yet it doesn't seem like V-19 pilots received any sort of extra training. Third, there are just simply better options, notably the V-Wing, which is still sort of like a TIE fighter, with a focus on speed and maneuverability, but is at the very least shielded, and I think more smartly designed. But the major issue is still doctrinal, and I've alluded to this, but not really explained it. Using cheap fighters isn't necessarily a bad thing, for example, we know the CIS did so with some effectiveness. However, it didn't work for the Republic, notably because they just didn't have enough clones and they didn't have enough ships. It worked for the CIS because they could swarm their enemies. Many light ships together can really put a pounding on an enemy fleet. But with just a few V-19s, all you're really going to do is get yourself killed, especially when going against sheer numbers, like the Republic was. That's why, despite being similar to the TIE Fighter, I think the V-19 is a much, much deadlier ship to be flying. Anyway guys, that is my list of 5 Star Wars starships you would absolutely not want to find yourself behind the controls of. Which do you think is most likely to kill you? I've put a poll in the upper right hand corner, let me know what you think up there. Today's question of the day comes from Eon Gaming, who says, I'm a super big fan and so is my wife. My stepmother likes to watch your videos too, but she can't alone because she's deaf and needs us to sign what you say to her. The auto-generated captions aren't accurate. Do you think you could start posting captions to your videos to help the hearing impaired of your audience? Well, that's a great question. Personally, I would absolutely love to do this, but I'm not sure how feasible it is. Some videos like this have almost no script to them, while others are fully scripted out. As much as I would love to transcribe videos by ear, I just don't have time to do so, especially not for each one. That being said, I'll do two things. I'll look about uploading my scripts whenever possible. Just know they're usually written in shorthand so I'm not sure whether that's a really great option, but I also want to let you guys know that I do have community contributions open. If you were able to transcribe the videos, you can do so immediately by basically clicking the closed caption tab, and you can do so not only in English, but in any language. I also will say, in my experience just reviewing my own videos with Google Auto Captioning on, which I do all the time, it seems to be really, really good. It can even pick out Star Wars terms like Rusan Reformation. I know that's not necessarily a great answer, but unfortunately, it's all I can offer right now. I will say though, I think it's super, super cool that your family enjoys the content. I'd like to thank you guys for getting to the end of today's video. If you have a question or a topic you'd like to see me cover in the future, make sure to leave that down below, as well as any comments you might have about this video. Anyway, until next time guys, may the force be with you.